So it's the 2021 moose season. We're in early October. Uh, I was very, very excited for this week of hunting. I was guiding my good friend, Luc Giroir, who's been a, a client for several years and quickly became a friend. We get along really well. We you know, think the same way, we enjoy the same thing. So it's always nice when you have a client that comes for a week and it, you know, it's less of a job. It's basically just hunting with a friend, so. Okay, hey. <laughs> My name is Luc Jawa, I'm from Balcour, Quebec. This is in the uh, Eastern Township, south of Montreal. And uh, I'm here today for moose hunting. I was really excited for this week, knowing that the, the weeks leading up to this point had been good. Uh, the first week of the season, we ended up getting a nice bowl for my clients. The second week, unfortunately, was really foggy and windy, so it was not the best conditions. And then when I saw the weather forecast for this third week with Luke, I was pretty excited. I knew the moose were around. We'd seen lots of tracks. We'd heard lots of moose, lots of activity. So um, I was really hoping to provide him with another great experience. Yeah, last year, first time ever. Slow and quiet. Yeah. Just keep on, make sure he doesn't get up. So, here I am with Luc Girard, and we just had a, a nice bowl out at the Salt Lick. We actually had two bowls answering he grunted before he came out and we also had another bull grunting from the left hand um, the left hand side of the the lake uh, beautiful morning we saw a really nice bull here yesterday morning as well and uh, super nice and calm anyway Luke made a, a really nice shot and uh, I followed up with another one just to make sure that he wasn't going any farther than we wanted him or needed him to go so uh, it's October 21st September 21st and uh, yeah we got our moose down and it looks like a nice one. Last year we shot a moose on his first day of hunting and not that I necessarily want the hunt to end that quickly with Luke uh, but you know we were hoping to do the same thing and get him another nice bowl this year and, and just spend some nice time together in you know the beautiful location that Lac Kamachigam is. My hope for this year was uh, just to get more days <laughs> I was spoiled last year. It was just to be a witness of some action. Uh, doing better as a joke, yeah, uh, oh yeah. My expectation this year, uh, just spend some quality time with Rob in the wood. Uh, learn more from him, and then uh, hopefully getting a chance to get another one. My expectations for this season are honestly pretty high. Um, it's nice that this is the second year that I've owned the lodge, but it's the sixth year that I've hunted moose there. So this year I purposely chose a spot that really hasn't been hunted in many, many years. And it's kind of funny, the reason it hasn't been hunted is because it's the main landing of our, uh, our site, which is based off an island for the fishing in the summer. So I put a, a camp quite literally in the parking lot of our, our main area to access the islands in the summer and from there I'm using that as a base camp to then access new parts of the territory that I know haven't been accessed in many many years and even beyond the road systems that are there I knew that I was going to be calling into areas where there were moose that haven't been called to in a long long time.
Our first morning was beautiful. I mean, there was fog on the lake, the, the leaves are all changing color. I mean, it's absolutely my favorite time of year to be out in the woods. So each day and each week is sort of its own new adventure. So that first morning with a new client in a new week is always exciting, it doesn't matter where you are. As I mentioned, I like to go to spots that I haven't been to before, so there was, there was one stand location that I hadn't called from in the last two weeks. When it's the beginning of the season, generally the cows that are calling, they are, it's called a non-receptive call. So the bulls will start hanging around with the cows, but the cows aren't ready to breed yet. So when they call or when they vocalize, they're actually showing their distress or their unhappiness with that bull that's in the area. So when they do their call, I, I put quite a bit of a shake into my voice. So I'll do it here now, but this is the unreceptive cow call, usually best first thing or early in the season. When I'm calling, I plug my nose to try to give myself a little bit more of a, a nasal sound. And I'm basically just saying, wah, and then I'm putting, like I say, some shake. So hopefully you can hear that here. And then by moving the horn around a little bit, you're just helping spread that sound, whether it'll bounce off a hill or the wind will take it in different directions. So when I'm doing it in real life, I'm actually really exaggerated and I'm doing it in 360 degrees all the way around me. So early season, non-receptive cow call, that's usually what I start with. Um, sometimes you want to mix in a bull grunt as well. So that sounds, again, it just makes it more realistic that there's a bull with that cow and she's not happy that he's there. So a grunt is pretty easy. All you're doing is you're more or less just saying, um, sort of a, a woof or a woof um, into the into the call. You have to be careful with the woof because sometimes that's an alarm call. So I'll just do more of a a woof. So that's your basic grunt call. Um, as the season goes on and the cows are then more receptive, as they're coming into heat, they're gonna be vocalizing, trying to call the males to them saying, hey, I'm ready to breed. Let's see who's out there, come on over. So it's very similar to the call that I did earlier, which was the non-receptive cow call, except this time I'm taking the shake out of the voice and calling for any animal, whether it's you know deer, moose, anything, you wanna to try to put as much emotion as you can. So it's, it sounds funny about putting emotion into a call, but you wanna sort of get lots of air in your lungs, really use that voice to, to try to show emotion if you can. It's think of a dog that's whining or anything like that, right? It's all just sort of putting emotion into vocalizations. So I did it a little bit longer. I took some of that shake out of the call and that's your basic cow sort of looking for a bull or saying, hey, I'm here, I'm ready, come and find me. Uh, the bull grunts stay relatively the same. Sometimes they differ a little bit, but um, the big thing with bull calls is think of the cadence. Generally, they will grunt every step or every two steps as they're coming in. So you'll just want to do it in a short series. Oh. 
Ooh. So those are your basic, basic cow calls and your basic bull grunts. It should at least give you the basics on uh, how to get out there and get started. There was basically no wind. We were facing, you know, the salt lick that was across from us in the bay. Uh, we're looking at a beautiful hardwood ridge that sort of came up from the lake uh, at that point. And uh, it was funny, on one of my calling sequences, I even went out and I was walking along the shoreline of the water, uh, splashing my feet in the water, making it sound like moose. And sure enough, there were fresh moose tracks, you know, in the water right there. So that always makes you feel good and makes you feel confident when uh, you see fresh tracks to know that there's at least something in the area. That first morning, we brought me back in the moose hunting mode. So peaceful with the panorama, the leaves color. We're done around 10.30 and for me, uh, I got what I wanted for that first morning. Just being out there, quiet and enjoying wildlife. Um, because I had several other groups of hunters in the territory, after breakfast I did a, a bit of a road tour to go visit the other hunters, see how they were doing. And as I left our road to go visit the territory, um, I noticed some fresh tracks, two different sets of tracks, but going in the same direction. So my initial plan after hunting the morning was to try another spot on the lake where there was a lot of activity. Um, in the previous weeks I'd seen a cow there, we had heard a bull on several occasions. So once I saw those tracks kind of diverging into the same corner, it was a change of plan. When I got back to camp, uh, I let uh, Luke know that uh, plans had changed and we were going to go to where the tracks were telling us to go. Rob showed me in August when I came here for fishing and I uh, was so anxious to, do, to go to that place. This was a spot that after looking at maps and, and aerial photos basically last winter, knowing that I wanted to hunt this area this year, I went in and, and laid boots on the ground and, and walked around this creek system and basically found what I think was the perfect tree. It was on a bit of a, a point, so you're looking up a creek system one way, down a creek system the other way, and it opens up into a bit of a, a grassy meadow uh, on either side. The topo was just perfect. It's a great stand location. I, I was feeling good about it, knowing that you know behind this stand or across the creek is basically a big chunk of land where there's two lakes and there's no other roads and trails. So I think this spot was, was perfect for that and that there was just no other human access uh, to get to these moose. We went to the site, uh, it was probably 4.30, 5 o'clock. The sun was pretty high. Uh, actually, it was warm, really warm. You know, we got to the edge of this this creek and we've had a lot of rain in the last two weeks. So basically what was a dry sort of field or, or, or marshy area in the summer was now quite flooded. So, I mean, uh, we were sitting in, in chairs with our boots and had water sort of up to our ankles and the black flies were not fun. So it's certainly when it's that warm, the moose just aren't gonna be moving and I don't wanna call the moose under conditions that uh, they wouldn't normally be calling themselves. Again, we went in a little bit later than normally I, I would just because it was so hot. Uh, we had the thermocell on for the first little bit to try to help with the bugs. And quite literally, we just sat there for about an hour. I mean, I even got my phone out and played a little video game. Um, my magic hour is sort of once the tree, or well, once the sun hits the treetops, that's when I put everything away and, and kind of put the game face on and, and start calling at that point. And gradually the sun, the sun came down and we were back with most hunting condition. You could feel the temperature dropping like a rock and that's when I get excited because when the moose feel that temperature dropping, that's when they get up and they start moving and they start calling. Rob 
kept doing his ritual like every half an hour, a few calls, and it been it, 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 it went on for a good hour and a half. I think it was probably about half an hour before dark. I heard a series of four grunts, uh, more or less, you know, pretty much straight in front of me, but a little bit off to the right. They talked to each other for, I would say, a good 20 minutes, like on and on. Ooh. 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 So I started to be concerned about daylight. The clock was just ticking down. It was getting darker and darker as it got closer. And then it became quiet. It was just that, that magic hour where he just didn't seem like he was going to come in front of us before it got dark. So I, I whispered over to Desmond, our cameraman. Desmond, as quietly as we can, we're going to back out of here. Yeah. He's like, he, he's far enough away. I don't think we'll get him in before dark, but I don't want to spook him. So he's still here in the morning. So you can leave your chair, leave your tripod, leave as much as you can. It's a big ordeal to pack and unpack and especially to try to do it quietly is a real challenge. Then I had Luke behind me, but I wasn't able to communicate directly with him either. So he wasn't really too sure uh, what was going on or what we were doing. I was getting excited to see this moose coming out, but the guys below me were, were packing up. I'm like, what are they doing? So. As we're doing all this, or quite literally, just as Desmond has all of his gear packed up, he puts his backpack on his back, I hear the moose grunting again. At this point, my biggest fear was, he's coming out and we're just not ready. So if he comes out and you got guys packing up, standing up, moving, well, he'll come and he'll just gonna go back and that's it. And this time, he's grunting and coming towards us. He's coming towards us fairly quickly. This guy decided to come down, and he was coming down. So again, change of plans. Anyway, it was too late to try to slip out of there because he was coming. So mind shift for me, instead of being quiet and trying to, you know, just get out of there, I then had to switch gears and say, okay, if he's coming, I need to try to get him to come as soon as possible. But again, daylight was, uh, was becoming a problem. We had probably five to 10 minutes window at the most. Just get something ready. Get something ready. Well, we could hear him raking trees in the bush. We could hear cracking and snapping. And um, it was just the whole experience of, of having this moose making all this noise coming in. And uh, of course, as Desmond is, you know, now unpacking his bag as quickly as he can. And I'm there. I cannot do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same position. Sure enough, I think you know, within seconds of him getting the camera on the tripod again, here's this beautiful bull, uh, you know, looking straight at us coming out of the woods. Big guy, really big guy. Here we are. We have very few minutes left. And this guy has to be in a perfect position to take a shot. And it's still getting darker and darker. So he's there looking at us. Again, I'm continuing to grunt. He's answering back. He's, you know, I'd say coming in on a string. Uh, he was definitely committed. He was standing up, looking at us. And then Rob, whatever he was doing, this guy was just standing there waiting. But he was facing directly onto us. So. At one point, I basically said, you know, I knew I had to do something to mix it up a little bit as the clock was ticking. 